Okay, let's run through a battle for War Room, a Larry Harris game. This battle takes place in North Africa, where we have the Germans and Italians versus the Americans. Uh, you'll transfer the units from the world map to the battle board. You'll want to pick the correct side of the battle board. This is the land side. The flip side is the naval side. Then arrange your units in each of these rows here according to their type. And each side will simultaneously be choosing stances. And that affects how, what dice they roll during the two stages of battle. For example, let's come up from the bottom. The infantry here have a defensive stance where they have an extra uh, hit point, so to speak, before they're eliminated. Whereas the offensive stance, they roll more dice, but they only have one hit point. For the artillery, if you choose the anti-air stance, you'll be rolling more air dice, but fewer land dice. For the armor, you'll have this extra box, uh, hit point box, um, but you're rolling fewer dice during the land combat, but you do have an air die to roll. And on the air side, there's air and ground. Here they're fighting against air, and here they're fighting against ground. And for the bomber stances, there's either strategic bombing, which is uh, will be explained in a different video, and the um, ground bombing. Okay, so each side will be choosing their stances. The side that goes first in turn order must finalize them. But before that, uh, if there are multiple nations on a single side, for example, there's the Italians and the Germans here, they'll need to choose a commander, and if they can't decide, they'll have to, uh, the first in turn order will decide who the commander is. Okay, so let's say they've decided upon this arrangement for uh, their stances, and you'll notice that the Italians are in a column here, and the Germans are in a column here. You won't want to get these mixed up. The US don't have to worry about that. Even though they brought multiple commands here, the 82nd and the 42nd, uh, they can return as you please after the battle between these two commands, assuming they survive. So in each battle, there is an air stage if there are air units present, and a land stage if there are land units present. You resolve the air stage first, and then the land stage. So let's go ahead and count up the dice needed for the air stage. Uh, on the American side, they have one fighter for three and one bomber for four. So we'll use one of these hotspots and note four for how many dice they'll be rolling. And on the axis side, they have six, two fighters for six, one armor for one, so that's seven, eight, nine. So they're rolling nine dice. So the side whose commander is first in turn order will roll first. So let's say the axis are first, we'll be rolling for them. And in any battle, for the air battle, only 30 dice can be rolled maximum. Uh, that's three batches of 10. And in the land battle, likewise, 30 dice is the maximum one side can roll. After that, they cap out and they're simply there to take hits. So let's see what they got. Scoot this into camera view. If that can be seen. Yeah. So you always go from the bottom up. So they rolled nine dice and they're looking for greens and reds and blacks and whites. So it looks like they got two greens. The attacker always decides who takes the hit. So these are in different stances here. Um, damage is resolved simultaneously for each stage. So this is one hit, and then this is a second hit. This is now eliminated. And then he moves up the chart. There's red. The red takes a hit for the bomber. 
and then he resolves the black. Black is wild. Uh, he will choose to damage the fighter. And then finally, the white. The white is wild for any unit that is in one of these white triangle damaged boxes already. So he'll choose to eliminate the bomber. Then the Americans go uh, with four dice. Let's see what they get. They rolled very poorly, getting no greens or blacks or whites. So now we move to the land battle. These eliminated fighter units will not get to participate in the land battle. There's also a special feature of the land battle called force advantage, which is reminded here. And that is whoever brings fewer types to the battle, their black and white roles are considered misses. So I, the, the US only have two types. They're bringing armor and infantry, whereas the Axis have three types, green, blue, and yellow. So the Americans suffer from uh, force advantage. So I'm going to put this here as a reminder that their blacks and whites are misses. So now we count up the dice needed for both sides. Uh, you may not change stances. You set stances all in the beginning before either stage. So let's set that up. Uh, the fighter here was in the air battle. They chose not to, so 2 times 4 is 8, 9 plus 4 is 13. So we'll take, I put a 10 there and a 3 there for 13. I think I got that right. 8, 9 plus 4 is 13. And then for the axis, they have one fighter that's going for the land, so that's 3. Uh, their armor is in the upper defensive stance, so that's five, six, seven, eight, plus four, 12. Let's just double check that. Uh, three, five, six, seven, eight, plus four is 12, yes. Okay, so now again, the axis will roll their first batch. See if we can get that in the view. You move. You start from the bottom up. Only one yellow is rolled, and the attacker chooses. They'll choose this, and uh, then they go on to blue. There's no blue. They move on to green. There's two green hits. So let's one, two, and then there's three black hits and a white. So because. Uh, Green is harder to roll. There are four yellow sides to a die, three blue sides, two green side, one red, one black, and one white on one of these 12-sided dice. They're all the same. So he'll choose a black, and that's one, two, three, and then choose a white. So that's their first batch, and then they're rolling two more. You must always damage a wounded one in the same row before choosing one that is undamaged. So for example, if this was here, you would have to dam eliminate this one before damaging this one, unless they were in separate rows. So here you could damage this one or damage this one. All right, let's roll there two before we forget what we're doing. Two black dice. So all the only targets can be ground targets during the land battle. So that eliminates all of the US ground forces, but they still get a chance to roll. So 
Now the Americans will be rolling their dice. They're rolling a batch of 10. Let's see what they get. Their blacks and whites do not count. I'll have to remember that. So they rolled one, two, three yellows. That's one, two, three. And they rolled two blues. They can split because they're not in the same row. So they're both wounded. And then three greens. One, two, three. Now the whites do not count. So now they roll their second batch of three dice. There we go. Uh, they eliminate this yellow and one of the blues. And again, the black is a miss because of force advantage. So after all the dice are rolled, the battle ends. Even if there are survivors, any units which are wounded may be repaired at a cost of one resource of any type per unit. So if the Axis wish to repair this, they'll probably pay an OSR because that's the most common. So they move the pins or the tracker down one spot on their resource tracking board. And likewise, the US will repair their fighter. And then eliminated units are transferred to the uh, morale board because they will add up to cause stress. Uh, and then finally, uh, these units will be transferred back to the map under the stacks. The Italians must still be under the Italians and the Germans must be under the Italians. But as I said, if there were any survivors, they could mix and match as they please among the same nation. Uh, if the territory was lost, um, they would the loser would gain stress equal to the strategic value of the territory controlled. And then they would hand over the territory card to the victor, and that new victor would add it to their card count in their card holder. And the victor would also gain a medal. The commander decides which of the participating nation receives the medal. And uh, finally, you'll update the hotspot marker if the area is still contested. Now we'll go over a few features of the naval battle board, or sea battle board. Uh, you'll notice there's an additional color for the battleships. So there's yellow, blue, green, and red. And then there's no stance for strategic bombing, as that only pertains to territories. Uh, you also notice there's no China, for they have no oil to build air or sea uh, units. Uh, so there's two units which have special uh, abilities. The submarine has a dive ability. You'll notice there's no white uh, triangle, so they, you must roll a yellow in order to damage and fully eliminate a submarine. If the submarine is remains here after each batch rolled, it may escape, dive and escape, and it's moved over to here. And uh, they still have their combat values assigned because that's done at the beginning of the battle, but they merely escape the battle. Um, secondly, there's the cruiser escort stance, uh, this upper stance here, not this lower one, has a special ability where the cruisers, if they survive, as damage is assigned from bottom to top here, if they survive all the blue hits, they may optionally absorb hits assigned to green and red, the carriers and battleships. For example, the Axis uh, chooses to damage, rolls a green and chooses to damage a carrier in the anti-air stance, or if there was 
one in each, it would still choose which stance it would want to assign the damage to. It chooses to assign the hit, and the cruiser steps in and says, no, actually, we're going to take the hit ourselves. And so the carrier would not take the damage, but the escort would. So that's the cruiser escort ability. Um, force advantage still applies. Um, the side with fewer types will not uh, have their black and white dice count. Then there's another feature, if the battle takes place where one side or both sides have a port adjacent to that sea region, uh, they'll gain a benefit. Um, they'll gain plus two um, in the surface battles only. This does not pertain to the air battle. Uh, so, like I said, both sides may gain that ability, but it is not cumulative, so if there are multiple ports, they, you don't gain plus four. Uh, the other benefit of this port is that you will, as indicated by these little icons, is free repair. Um, so you will not have to pay the resource in order to repair. You'll also see that the cruisers have, similar to the armor, they have this extra box of damage. So it takes three hits before they are eliminated in these particular stances. So that's a review of the naval board. Uh, there's one other combat rule. I'm going to talk about garrison force. If, um, say, the Axis invade a territory where there are no British, there are no units present to defend, they must still get past the garrison force. And so the British or the defender would roll two dice and it's always two dice. And if the two colors match, then they score a hit against that color if that unit is present in the attacking force. So if the, let's switch this to yellow, if the Axis were attacking with infantry, they would lose a single infantry unit, and this is only done once, this defensive role. If only a single unit was attacking, then they would not be able to capture the territory. Um, however, if they had multiple units, then they would still be able to capture the territory. Now, blacks are wild, so this would still be an infantry. However, any other mismatch uh, would be considered a miss. And if two greens were rolled, but there was no armor present, that is also considered a miss. So that's it for uh, a battle overview of War Room.